The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. It doesn't matter where you're at as long as you're here at the appointed time. Ah! Why is it not doing something? It should be doing something. And it's not. Could it have done something yet again? Uh, yeah, it has. I'm not exactly sure why. Let's do this, and then let's do that, and try it again. <clears throat> the following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Yes, it does. Okay. So, uh, little technical difficulties, but uh, we're out here kind of hovering around. Uh, let's make sure and update it just to make sure I get the last little tick. Uh, just a hair over 3,900. 3,908. 71. Now, uh, during options expiration, uh, normally bullish, 80% uh, of the time, uh, you should uh, pretty much uh, figure out um, the low of uh, the Wednesday, the week before expiration, and look at it. And of course, that was about, uh, uh, well, is that on the spies? Yeah, it's on the spies. Let's look at the uh, S&P itself here get you that number uh, there we go let's go back back to the 11th uh, so the low on that day would be 3928 um, so you've got an 80% chance that you close above that just every month there's only uh, two months maybe out of the year that you don't it's almost always set some kind of low on the Delta neutral day and then either you get uh, one and a half percent higher or in the case where it doesn't pay off, 3.5% lower. So it is a asymmetrical trade, but uh, overall you've got to have some fairly compelling evidence that the world is going to hell in a handbasket in the next day. What if it goes out there Monday? Well, it doesn't do you any good for expiration. So let's look at that. So really we're talking about 39.29. Uh, on the S&P cash. Uh, we're just a, kind of a hair underneath that right now. So that's kind of the worst case scenario uh, that we've gone down a couple of times and tried to test those lows today. Uh, the question is, did we get anywhere close to the 18 billion shares we talked about yesterday? And the answer, negatory big, uh, man, I don't even remember my CB stuff. Negatory big, uh, what was it? Big chicken rancher? I can't remember now. Maybe somebody in the CB world remembers all the uh, Big Daddy. I don't think it was Big Daddy. Anyway, uh, CJ McCall. All I remember about CB radios and stuff. Anyway, seven, yeah, we got uh, 7.9 billion shares. So we're doing about half right now with 209. As we said yesterday, it would take a miracle to get to the 18 billion shares we were looking at to blow out the lows. And of course, uh, I got, uh, what, 12 and a half, maybe a little more, almost 13 billion shares yesterday. So we were about 5 billion shares lighter than the last time we came down here. So for the most part, although we haven't broken the low, we've gotten into that candle and we've done it with significantly lighter volume. Does that mean the bear market is over? No. Just means probably the first leg of it is going to take some time uh, to develop the B to C leg before you get the C to the D leg. Everybody always assumes uh, the end is nigh. And if it was, then it'd just be over and it'd be time to go long. And it is. It's uh, hope springs eternal. Everybody believes that uh, the market's going to turn around just a little bit. Um, there may be some things that change. I think. Politically, uh, now that we're getting into the heart of the matter, uh, our first big week of uh, primaries for the fall election, 
uh, on Tuesday. Yeah, the results are probably going to mean that we're going to see a policy change, I suspect, in uh, energy. And that may help out the rest of the market. Uh, I don't know when that's going to happen. We've got two more weeks of Tuesday primaries. Uh, weirdly enough, the primaries here in Florida are last week or so of August. So they're we're well far away for us, but I think, what, three-fourths of all the primaries uh, across the country happen here in the next uh, few weeks uh, and basically starting on Tuesday of this week. Uh, I think a lot of people thinking about re-election are going to throw a lot of weight around. Uh, doesn't matter what party you belong to, the number one goal after you get elected is get re-elected. And if everything's going to hell in a handbasket, uh, you better be seen to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. So I suspect, and some of the stuff I saw in the news today, I suspect the long knives are out to change the, the story and uh, in a positive way that people can't just uh, ridicule. Um, kind of like the stock price, uh, when everybody goes to fill their vehicle up, um, it's not something easily you can ignore. So energy prices, of course, we've seen uh, we've seen uh, Target this week and Walmart get whacked. Uh, interesting discussions about uh, from Target about what they're going to do, and that is, uh, if the thing weighs anything or it's big, they are probably going to kick it out of the store. They don't want anything that has a uh, high uh, uh, weight or uh, uh, shipping to cost ratio. They want uh, lots of fluffy towels that weigh nothing. They want uh, anything uh, that means that their shipping and freight costs are lower. Uh, the, I think it was Target. Walmart, too, talking about getting rid of ba bicycles. Uh, other things that, although they make okay money on, uh, are just hard to ship, and they, they don't kind of like the margins on them after that. Uh, so look for some changes in your retail store about what they cover. It's going to be more about what the profit margin will hold. And I think it's probably good for Amazon. Uh, Amazon will just raise their prices. And, of course, uh, they don't really care because uh, nothing's really in stock. It's always uh, given to them by the manufacturer to sit at these folks. Uh, they don't put a lot of money out on much of anything unless they're buying it directly from China and paying it uh, on the nose and probably getting a big discount to do it. 877-927-6648. Uh, you can email me at uh, path at tfnn.com. Uh, okay. Negatory Big Bear or Little Buddy. Yeah, that's it. All I can remember about CBs were when they were real big, I think around mid-70s, and I had one in my car, like 76 or 77. No matter what they would say, if it was supposed to be Big Bear, I'd say, I'd, I'd say something different. I'd say, you know, uh, Black Bear, come back at you. And, of course, they'd say, it's Big Bear. And, man, people just got mad when you wouldn't actually dress them. It was fun, nonetheless. We'll be back in a minute. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. Yes, JC, I do remember that. Uh, first question of the day is from. Uh, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Um, so what do we have out here in Google? Certainly have a nice looking low in the market. Uh, and that is the Google. If uh, you're some of the, who was it? Was the uh, senator from Arizona who assumed room temperature a few years ago. Can't remember his name now. I do digress. Anyway, uh, he don't call everything the Google, the Facebook. Maybe somebody remembers in it. Yeah, it's, uh, John McCain. Uh, anyway, uh, you've got uh, the Google out here that did test with close enough for my, uh, my methodology, and that is uh, you test a previous low on half the volume you don't have to hit to the penny, although it would be nice. I like it a little better. But uh, yes, uh, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, uh, that's a nice looking low. Uh, all you got to do is really kind of turn around before the end of the day or tomorrow, and you got something out here. 2.7 million shares on May 12th for the Google, uh, and that was at uh, 21.96 got to 2200 and again if you get half the volume down there you don't hit it that's generally enough uh, I'd say it's a 80% signal and if you actually pierced it maybe a 90% uh, uh, signal that's it pier uh, pierced the actual low out here so you got light volume as I said we're getting into this kind of uh, summer trading and it's going to be typ typified by lighter volume uh, especially if everybody started getting short now. The old chestnut in the market is do not be short a quiet market. And they'll probably be fairly quiet next week. So we'll see what happens before the end of the day. I'm fairly optimistic into 2 or 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. After that, maybe everybody gets all nasty. Uh, just the emails I get, um, the hate emails, keep them coming. Because generally... 
Uh, when I even speak about being long something and get that much hate mail, it's an awful good sign uh, that I'm going to be right. Because generally the people that scream the loudest uh, about uh, further market lows, eh, probably not wrong in the long term, but in the medium term and the short term, there are the harder and more vociferous uh, the yell and scream the more I think that they're on the wrong side of history. So uh, we'll take a look at that. Never short a dull market. There's a reason why those things are there. Uh, speculation is old as the hills. It's happened before. It's going to happen again. And uh, why everybody thinks they're smarter and faster than uh, everybody that came before them, uh, human nature has not changed. And people will continue to make the same mistakes that they did 50 years ago or 100 years ago or 150 years ago. There's nothing new under the sun for speculation. Because it can't be. It's been around since the beginning of time. 877-927-6648. Uh, what else do we have? Okay. Uh, thanks, uh, you Beatle member, you. Okay. T -t -t what else do we have out here? Uh, this is the kind of emails I get. I, it's just probably the, the most boastful. And every time I've ever been this sure of anything, it always goes against me. Only for the second time in 30 years, I will go into a weekend 100% short. Other than that Sunday, I was thinking last Sunday we would be down 5 to 10%. Well, I will try it again. And you know what? Nobody has a crystal ball. As I like to say, I have a crystal brain, and I can think. But generally, when people start sending me a lot, I don't get much mail, and then I get a bunch of mail. It's either at the tops when everybody says it's going to the moon, and uh, they nay-nay me, nay, nay-nay me. Uh, and the same thing at the bottoms. I'll get a bunch of people that are telling me it's the end of the world. And I, well, medium, long-term, I think I am fairly bearish. I have said it how many times? Three-fourths of the time, the market, even in a bear market, is going higher. If you're always looking for that pot to boil, it rarely does. Now, I could be wrong. Uh, I have some very good risk-reward setups uh, that I put on today, and I think I put them on pretty much at the right time. I have uh, some good odds, and I've talked about why I think they're fairly good odds. Um, you know, I don't have... I've got, a, uh, I've got a fairly good bet that we probably don't go lower. I can't guarantee you we don't, but I'm going to say the odds in the past have been 80% or better. And uh, that I get confirming stuff out there. Is this a long-term low? In a long-term low, I would have seen everybody and their dog short today. So for all I know, Monday is the next giant chasm. Uh, that eats up the entire world with nuclear war tomorrow, probably not as probable. So uh, I will, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly optimistic for the next 24 hours. Uh, and that's about as far as I can see in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, through the windscreen on a foggy day. But don't be surprised. Now, one or two scenarios I kind of see setting up. One, we just absolutely rip up the last 30 minutes of the day, and we do nothing tomorrow. And the opposite uh, of that is maybe we just kind of stumble up into the close today, uh, and that means that maybe we get a fairly nice uh, continuation into the weekend. And my guess is that by 2 o'clock, 99% of it would be in. Maybe you get a bunch of people trying to short the uh, weekend once again, and people that have been on the right side uh, or want to get out do sell. Maybe you get a little bit of sell-off before the weekend. But um, very tough to see anything out here that tells me the next 24 hours go lower. We've had our test. The volume didn't come in. It still hasn't come in. Um, I'll change my opinion if the volume comes in. But uh, I gave it to you yesterday. 18 billion shares. We got less than 13 billion shares. We need 18 billion shares to blow through there. And even if you're bearish, you should expect a bounce. 
and the next time maybe you get to blow through down there, but you're going to need some more volume in my uh, learned opinion. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Uh, 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 what did I say the ES is delta neutral? Uh, don't do the ES. It's pretty worthless for that. Um, it's all about the cash against uh, options. Uh, so whatever it is, I don't know. But uh, uh, ideally, if uh, option market makers want to penalize the most amount of people, S&P 4000 for yet tomorrow's close. We'll be uh, back uh, in two. Two and two. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Or into the breach do we go here? And of course, uh, nothing like a little bit of history. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Well, it doesn't always repeat, but it does rhyme on this day in 1998. U.S. Justice Department and Attorneys General, I don't know why they were always uh, plural, of uh, 20 states. If anybody knows why they uh, plural, uh, uh, pluralize the generals and attorneys, both, let me know. The District of Columbia antitrust lawsuit against Microsoft is filed. The case focuses on Microsoft's integration of the Internet Explorer web browser into Windows 98, uh, dug in so deep you would think it was an Alabama tick. 
The trial becomes one of the most famous events in tech history, eventually resulting in a settlement between the DOJ and Microsoft. And in fact, the sanctions levied against Microsoft only recently ended in May of 2011, almost exactly 13, almost exactly, who wrote that? 13 years after the suit was filed. And of course, uh, it took another couple of years to get rid of another embedded tick. That was uh, Bomber, who's the CEO of Time. And of course, uh, nothing but up and net uh, since then. Although a little bit of a pullback out here now. Uh, but I do digress. Uh, you always have to know there is only there is a political and a legal, but generally the legal is part of the political out here. And of course, uh, what most people don't know is the band of uh, uh, of uh, carry on what are the car on carriers. I don't know uh, the uh, band of folks, mostly from Chicago. Uh, ended up uh, coming in to the White House in 1992. Uh, many of them were from Chicago and used to the Chicago way uh, and uh, had threatened uh, Bill Gates many times uh, that, uh, you know, his windows could be broke. And see what I did there? You know, it'd be a shame if those windows got broke. But you know what? If you threw a lot of money our way, uh, maybe they wouldn't, uh, maybe... We'd stand outside and make sure no one broke your windows. Anyway, uh, a lot of the uh, hangers-on, maybe that's the best way to describe it, uh, infected Washington, D.C. Uh, with even higher level of uh, corruption. And uh, that was uh, one that he ignored. And he said later he probably should have just paid off uh, the folk. Um, and there. I don't know if... How high it went up, but certainly uh, from Bill Gates, it, uh, his discussion was, uh, you know what, I probably should have played along to get along. And uh, in these days, uh, it continues to be a threat, uh, and that is antitrust lawsuits. Uh, again, theoretically, you're supposed to have a Justice Department that is blind, but uh, eh, not so much. Uh, and, of course, a uh, little money greases the palm. Just wet my beak. I can just hear the conversations now. And, of course, it uh, has continued on and on. And I'm sure on both sides of the aisle it has happened. On this day in 1998. <laughs> yes, a lot of people with broken noses. <laughs> okay. Um so, well, we looked at Google already. We got uh, some other emails here. Uh, we'll see how everything's going on here. Uh, what do we got? Is that uh, an update? Yeah, it is kind of just kind of uh, hanging around unchanged now on the S and P. We're down ten points, which is a rounding error in the uh, volatility we've had lately. Uh, Dow down one sixty six. Nasdaq actually turned the page. God, I can remember the first time I ever heard that song. Oh, boy. Uh, I'm trying to remember the words to it. The reason I remember it so vividly is I'd never heard the song before, but I was driving around 1980 between Des Moines, otherwise known as Des Moines, Des Moines, Iowa, and somewhere else in a blizzard of a snowstorm. And uh, uh, the story of uh, uh, Bob Seeger driving across from town to town. Of course, uh, I didn't have long hair and didn't look like a hippie. Uh, but uh, yeah, just the that's kind of a driving song, isn't it? And it hit me at about the right time. I mean, between two big cities and nothing but a massive snowstorm. And uh, you could hardly see where you were going, but I made it there. 877-927-6648. Uh, okay, let's start looking at the usual suspects. Um, a lot of people think, well, the market couldn't bounce. What if you just had some short covering in a stock that uh, had been testing a previous low on lighter volume? Eh, and say, uh, you know what, it'd be a shame if your windows got broken. <laughs> I can just imagine those conversations. May 12th on Apple. 
183 million shares. Count them, folks. 183 million glorious shares. 138.80. Got down 136.60 today. This one did prove the point in Wyckoff terminology. That is, go below it. Now all you have to do is close back above it. 180, 138.80. Uh, not quite half the volume, but damn near and damn straight. Less than 100 million shares as uh, the dulcet tones of my voice reach out to you. So uh, you've got one there. Let's take a quick look at the cues. Okay. Uh, what do we have out here? 121 million shares, May 12th. A day that won't live in infamy because it actually turned around and went higher. Uh, that was uh, 284.94 with 120 million shares. Today, 56 million shares. Well, again, could things get worse? They can. Do they automatically instantly go worse, uh, get worse? No. But uh, what is that, uh, man? I probably need to, uh, to uh, memorize it. But uh, let's see, what is it? Uh, it's that I uh, brought it up on uh, earlier in the week, uh, and that was, yeah, Benoit Mandelbrot. Clouds are not spheres, mountains are not cones, coastlines are not circles, and bark is not smooth, nor does lightning travel in a straight line, neither do markets. So, yeah, I'll always remember that. Uh, so what do we got here? Take a quick look out here. And we're down a whole one point or a 0.04% on the S&P now. NASDAQ starting to do a little bit of that. I think I can. I think I can. Again, uh, I think somebody in the den brought it up um, on the S&P cash. I'm looking for something like 4,000. That's uh, what, uh, 78 points higher than here. That's not much of a stretch in what we've seen, almost a rounding error. So I kind of like it. Um, again, if it hits that today, I'll probably be out uh, and let everybody fight over whatever is there tomorrow. I'm not one that has to be there for the last uh, nickel. My dad used to say it, make a nickel ride a buffalo. Of course, I never really understood that until he found out he found a nickel, an Indian buffalo nickel. That is squeezing the nickel so hard in case you watch it. How the brand rose up in the back. We'll be back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Come back to another glorious market. At least it's glorious for me. Uh, continuing uh, the chop around the highs. Now we're down 10 points in the S&P cash. Again, I suspect uh, we're going to see this kind of ratchet up with every uh, move higher. Someone's going to dive on. And that's pretty much uh, at lows, even in markets that are going lower later, not now. Uh, you uh, see the most uh, poor, uh, people get the most short uh, at the bottom of a move. And again, I'm not saying that it's all over. I'm just saying that you could have an extended move higher. Uh, most of that move uh, in a bear market happens in the first few days of that move. And then you kind of stumble up uh, kind of lazily Eventually, you get up some resistance level, all the volume falls out like it did here to the downside, and you see a much higher move come. Yeah, actually made from nickel. Okay, we've got a few more emails here. Take a quick look at the other usual suspects, MSFT. Um, again, this one you'd like probably a little lighter volume, uh, the big deal on this one was $250 and two cents. It was on May 12th with 51 million shares. Today you are, got down in there. What was the low of the day? 251.88. So you're a couple bucks above that, but you've got half the volume at uh, 245 Eastern time, market time. Uh, Florida is the great state and free state uh, time. Uh, out here with half the volume. So now, could we get uh, a meteor hit the planet? Could someone set off a nuke and I'd be wrong? Yes, but I bought options. So my downside is limited and my upside is uh, Jack of the Beanstalk can grow all the way to the sky. Of course, it would have to do that in one day. Uh, what else do we have out here? Um, question about deer nothing runs like a deer I remember I grew up in my teens uh, when we moved in it was nothing but corn uh, and that changed when I moved out uh, over the period of a number of years to nothing but new suburbia uh, but uh, I remember looking at uh, the time uh, that uh, uh, the uh, farm magazines that some of the kids would have at school uh, and they'd be looking at tractors I thought, well, these these people are nuts who wants to look at a tractor anyway they'd have these magazines and of course a deer had this one and it said we stand behind all our machinery except our manure spreaders I always remember that anyway we had a big dip down into this one now did we get the volume necessary or is this actually setting up to look for something much better. So, the last low is the May 12th, 
1.9 million shares at $354.30. We almost got there today. What was the low of the day? 356.30. So within a couple of bucks, we got 1.4 million shares. I think there's better stuff out there in the sea. Uh, but again, any close about 10 bucks higher uh, would put in a fairly decent low and a double repo pattern kind of uh, out here. So I, the, the better view of this is the March 10th low that had 3.5 million shares uh, today compared to the 1.4 million shares. So this is the first lower low, May 12th. This is the second lower, well, not lower low, but a retest of that 362.30. Uh, and the volume's not all that exciting. Uh, that's kind of the whole market. So could we just have a, a, uh, a uh, dead cat bounce in the market based on nothing but uh, people giving up selling and far too many people getting short after a huge run? Uh, also not uh, the same kind of people that stayed at the party well, well bef after the uh, hosts uh, are hinting that you should have left. Well, that could be it. <laughs> Corn field in the fall. Uh, it is a field of dreams. Certainly is there. Uh, let's see if we have anything else. I uh, got new messages here. Uh, okay. Question about uh, a possible Nike move. Um, well, you certainly, this is kind of the whole market too. And what I was talking about yesterday, the volume wasn't coming in uh, on the Nike you got uh, 10 million shares from May 12th uh, to, 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 yeah, 105. Get to 106.76 uh, with half that volume today. So that's a pretty good indication you'd bounce. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe I, I don't know if I've got it here. Let's see if I do. If I've got the options data already in for Nike to see what they look like. Right, today is Thursday all day long. Let's draw that chart. Okay. Well, you got a pretty good indication that this thing wants to expire between 110 and 115. So what was your thing? 120 calls? That's uh, for a week from today or a week from tomorrow. Um, you could do that. I wonder what uh, short sellers have been doing in Nike. Certainly, you might get uh, a lot of that tomorrow, I think. Uh, in KE. Look at that. Uh, okay. You don't have a lot of bi-monthly shorting. You got 1.5 days to cover. I would kind of like a little bit more than that. Not that it's not going higher. It's just I love to see natural born suckers uh, on the wrong side uh, if I'm going long. And I don't see a lot. Um, the real uh, shorting in this is at 113. That was the last big day of uh, short selling. That was on the 13th. So a week ago last Friday, uh, closes 113. So for acceleration and higher, Nike needs 113 more than likely, and you had 23 almost, uh, oh man, 23 and a half percent short that day, but that was it. You don't have a ton of shorts, and generally the best thing to do to put together uh, light volume, heavy shorting, uh, is in a week, uh, as I said, next week, where probably by Tuesday, half of Wall Street's going to be out at the Hamptons. Um, so it's going to be light and variable. Uh, the shorts will probably slowly have to uh, cover, uh, but my guess is a lot of that happens in the next 24 hours. So that's it. Uh, anyway, there you go. Okay. Uh, is there any advantage to options that have 10 times the volume compared to the open interest uh, uh, for tomorrow? Um, I haven't really found that. They're going to cut uh, almost all the uh, premiums out by the time they're worth anything. A lot of times I actually exercise my options. So as long as they're good, that's it. It's generally 
Uh, find options maker that will actually pay you what it's worth. It's pretty tough on a Friday going into expiration. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we come back, getting ready to wrap up another wonderful day in trading, uh, trading, what would you call it? Tradium? Trade on? I don't know. Uh, I do digress once again. And of course, it will be very easy to win that award once again at the TFNN Awards policy of digression and other things too. Crude oil uh, up uh, 242. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that tells you a lot. Uh, but uh, what do we have? Well, as I said, uh, you've got a market that's kind of saying, I think I can, I think I can. Uh, does it have to be a rip your face off rally? It does not. Um, in fact, the slower, uh, the uh, slower and more methodical the, the ticks higher are uh, just uh, means that maybe we get more and more. We get into Friday's expiration. If we got any kind of big rip uh, up to 4,000, I'd probably be saying, hasta la vista. Somebody in the den said maybe I should find somebody to be in my movie, Natural Born Suckers. I want to say a shout out to one of my uh, favorite customers of all time. And that was uh, Dick Van Dyke, who is 96 years old today. Um, 
most of the people I dealt with were all, of course, uh, behind the curtains kind of guys. Some of them would win uh, Academy Awards, but none of the ones uh, that were given away during television shows. Uh, these were all folks in the background for the most part, uh, like me. And, but uh, Dick Van Dyke, he, had a, he was one of these guys that back in the 60s even had a 8mm film camera. And he took picture, uh, pictures and movies throughout his entire life. And he would call us up and he was editing his own stuff out. He lived in Colorado at the time. I don't know where he is now. Of course, that was in the mid to late 90s. So this is 20 years on. He edited his whole life out. I guess that's going to hit one day after he uh, dies. So when you can, not when you have to, we're going to be here for the Super Bowl tomorrow. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.